In this lesson, we will be taking a look at the work point feature and also how to create a grounded work point. I'm in the whole features.ipt and the only thing that I've done to this file is I placed in a chamfer on that back face and you'll see why in a couple seconds here. From the part features panel, I'm going to go back and I'm going to select a work point. A work point can be used to help define other work features such as a work axis, a work plane, or as shown in the hole lesson that we can actually use that to help place a hole. So a work point, there's a couple of different ways of creating them. The basic one here is I can select two edges that intersect and the work point will get placed there. Another popular method for placing in work points is to select three faces. It's going to rotate this back. This is also where I'm going to select the face that was chamfered here. And you'll notice I now have a work point at the intersection of those three planes. Like everything else, if I go back and modify that chamfer feature, the work point itself will get updated to reflect its new location. Let's start up a new part file. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the 3D sketch and I want to show how to go back and create a grounded work point. So first of all, so now in this new part file here, I'm going to click return to exit out of the 2D sketch environment. And I'm going to scroll on down to the work point. Then I'm going to select grounded work point. And what a grounded work point is going to allow me to do is place it depending upon selected geometry. So the first one I'm going to place is going to be at my zero zero point. I'm going to go back and spin that around so we can see it a little bit cleaner. And I'm going to click apply to place one. So now what I can do is I can place in this next work point based on specific geometry. So if I want it to go so far in the X direction, I can just click on the X arrow and type in a value. So let's go out 20 millimeters and apply. You'll notice I now have work point two in the browser. I could also select on the, the sphere and then I can type in data for the X, the Y, and the Z and apply that. And you can see all of these are just creating another work point. You can also go back and define by selecting on the plane if you want to move to the next option in just a specific plane. So in this case, let's just go 40 over in the X and 50 in the Y. And again, apply that. If I select on the axes itself, we can go back and I can define an angle that I want to move that at. And let's apply that. Then I can just push it up as well and apply. And as soon as I'm done with all of these, I can go back and click OK. Now I have these points in space. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the 3D sketch environment and I can connect the dots to maybe help define a pipe run or anything else that you wanted to go back and actually have run in 3D space. So as I spin the geometry around here, you can see that it definitely is going in all three axes. Click return and I'll just finish this off just kind of show you what we can do here. So I'm going to create a work plane. Let's zoom in tight off that back edge. I'm going to make that the active sketch in this case We'll make it the 2D sketch. Select the circle tool. Go ahead and dimension that. Let's just make it 2.5. Spin it around. And let's return out of the 2D environment. And clicking on the sweep tool. Go ahead and click OK. And I now have a 3D pipe run. So in the 
Brock and move my cursor back over it. Right click and do the 3D move rotate, which will allow me to go back and reposition it. In this case, I'm just going to slide it over. Go ahead, click OK. And you can see that the pipe run in this case has updated to reflect that new value.